I grabbed the wrong coffee cup this morning when making my coffee. I have one that says poison on it, so I should have grabbed that one. It's October 1st. This is the best month in the world. Hopefully it will be an okay reading month. I do not have high hopes for my reading, but we will try our best. What do I have? I, I'm gonna just start with what I'm currently reading, and that's basically two books that I'm reading. The third one is the buddy read I will be reading later this month. Um, we have a plan, but in the meantime, I am reading Beautiful Redemption, which I'm very much enjoying. I am like 45% of the way through. Um, on page 187. I'm probably honestly gonna finish this one today because I'm having so much fun. Um, the other one I'm reading is gonna take me all month to watch. Uh, it is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter um, sequel. It's not the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It is The Last American Vampire. And this one's all about Henry and I'm only on page 46 for this one. This is a slow burn. There are like pictures in here. And I remember that a vampire Hunter took me literally like a year to read. So I do have the audiobook to help me along, but I also still think it's gonna take forever. So that's what I'm basically starting with. But um, let's see what I have on Libby. Okay, I have like five or six books on Libby. So we'll just get that, get to that when we get that. I honestly started this before at the beginning of September, I think, and I don't remember a whole lot. So I know that Abraham turned into a vampire and then killed himself. But I don't remember where we're going after that. And then for this one, Ethan is dead and it's still from his point of view and him in the afterlife is just great. I love Ethan. 10 out of 10. I don't care about anybody else but Ethan. It's so great. But there are also like things from the second book specifically that I don't remember that are in here that are kind of important. <laughs> so, oh well. We're just trekking along. I know I've been reading this for like two years almost now, so the series. Um, but that's why... Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to say that. I still have to finish my bullet journal. I have to get a new bullet journal because the Halloween ones are out still. We'll, we'll just see what it goes. But right now, I'm just going to finish this right now and then move on, I guess. I'm very tired. I only like just woke up and my voice is sounding awful because apparently I'm talking too much. But I also have mountains of homework I need to go do, but I can do the homework while I listen to this. So that's why that's the plan. I'm also rewatching Scream Queens. Um, 10 out of 10, loving that. I only rewatched the first season. The second season doesn't really matter to me, so first season it is. But thank you for coming to the new vlog. We'll have a fun time. October update. I voted today, so I'm wearing my sticker. School has been like a lot, and I burn myself at work, so I'm injured. But I'm also reading wise in a mood to just start and start and start and start and start books. So I've, I'm currently reading like five books right now. And I'm very disappointed in myself. But I am trying. I am trying to read. I'm definitely going to try to read today, which is Sunday. Um, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So I'm going to read tomorrow as well. Mostly listen to audiobooks because I have four out of five of these on audio. I'll kind of explain what I'm reading and where I'm reading it and how my thoughts are so far. You know? Um, so the first one I am reading as my train book this is my train book right now i also like bring this to school because i think it's a flex if you let a huge book sit on your desk while you're in class <laughs> i don't know it's a weird thing but i did bring this one to school but i do have it on my ipad or my tablet sorry and it is my contrary mary i am only 51 pages into it but it is really good so far and i've already had like three highlights because it is so funny so far um but this one takes place with Mary Queen of Scots while she's in France still. Um, she goes out partying, dressed as a dude. All of her friends, which are also named Mary, go out with her. And there is a fortune teller lady that's really fun. I like the fortune telling part, very cool. But that is my train book. My um, two audiobooks that I'm for sure reading. So my train book I do have the audiobook for, I just got it like today. So I will be listening to the audiobook for that. But the two main audiobooks that I have still are Abraham Lincoln uh, I keep wanting to say this Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It's not. It is The Last American Vampire. And I am really far into this. I made a huge dent. This is mostly like the one that I listen to at work. Um, and I'm 189 pages into this and I am enjoying it a lot. The other one that I have, I kind of put on the back burner because nobody wants it on Libby. So I keep request re-requesting and I'm leaving it for like the last one. It is Beautiful Redemption. This is really good. I'm having such a fun time. I'm on page 319. I'm literally like so close to being done, but I keep putting it on the back burner. 
corner and I'm having the time of my life like I think this is one of my favorite books that I'm currently reading other than My Contrary Mary I'm having a fun time and then the other kind of train book that I have but I will be listening to the audiobook today because it is due in a couple days is Anyway the Wind Blows I am on page 28 so I really haven't made a dent in this but I hopefully will today while I'm writing my notes because a lot of this weekend is just studying for me. I have one more assignment to do and it's paper and it's due Tuesday night so I'm not too concerned. And then my book that I have chosen on script to read while I'm sitting in class and I need to keep myself awake is Fragile Things and I have basically not even finished the introduction. I have one more page left of the introduction because that's how slow I am but this is a bunch of short stories so like reading one of these during class will be fine and I'll have a great time um but I also really really like the introductions that Neil Gaiman does for his short stories so I'm having a good time with that and those are basically the books that I'm reading right now um I have a stack of four other books that I would like to get to sooner rather than later four five six seven eight maybe eight books these are kind of like the eight that I want for the rest of the year so I'm not in any rush to read anything really fast but I would like to finish some stuff in October because I have not finished a book yet there's just so much homework I can't even I have a test on Thursday I have a midterm next week I just I've been doing so many assignment after assignment after assignment that I haven't had time to sit down and listen to an audiobook while I write notes is the issue right now so try my best but update later a change of scenery my printer <laughs> I am um, I kind of made a chunk I guess on any way the wind blows I got to chapter 19 120 pages my thoughts I came here because my thoughts are not good my thoughts are very not good okay I may in my head a while ago been like this is gonna be my last rainbow row book this is gonna be the one that I finish on with her is going to be the end of the journey with this author because she's not a great human being and I know that I don't follow her on anything I have her blocked basically on Instagram and Twitter um I just I needed a sense of completion since starting my journey with fangirl because I loved fangirl so much and it helped me so much when I was at that point in my life when I read it and I was truly hoping that maybe that this would help me in some way because fangirl helped me so much and I reread fangirl earlier this year in like January and I wanted to jab my eyes out <laughs> the whole time I was reading it and it made me so sad like when you reread something that helped you out so much in that point in your life and then going back to it and having the quality of it and the writing of it just drop drastically to the point where you drop it like three or I dropped it from like a five star to a three star I'm pretty sure um, if I didn't, I need to. But this, I wanted it to be like a sense of completion that I'm finished with this person, I'm done with these characters, I'm done with this world and this universe. And truly, the conversations that Simon and Baz have had in here have truly just made me, like, I don't give a fuck what happens in the rest of this book. And I am dangerously considering DNFing it. I was so excited, but the way that she's portraying their relationship with each other and the fact that Simon is giving up and then Simon's crawling back and then they're having so many issues and stuff because I know Simon's having issues but like the relationship between Simon and Baz truly doesn't feel like it's really having as much of a big deal and as many issues as they're making it seem and if I read one chapter where you guys are breaking up and then the next chapter you're getting back together like <sighs> I don't like the portrayal of that and I'm not having a fun time and I probably if I get maybe another hundred pages in to like the 200 page mark and I'm still not enjoying it will DNF it because I'm really I don't know where this book is going other than relationship up and down and up and down and up and down like I'm not having a fun time and I was really hoping that this would help me feel at least better emotions you know so that's where I'm at. I'm giving it a shot. It's a really pretty book. It's got some really pretty fan art on the inside, but I'm just not getting what I had hoped. And I understand there must be conflict and stuff, but like it feels like ever since Simon like lost his magic at the end of the first book that he is compensating his loss of magic by hating Baz when he really doesn't need to be. Like I, I, I don't understand the reason for it, especially in the third book. Like I don't get it. So 
I think she's just using it as a way to like it feels like a dig at a, like the queer community a little bit but I truly can't say anything about that but it really truly feels like that left right and center that these two have so many issues that it's because of they're gay because everybody who is straight in this book is basically fine and I and they're all like building their relationships happily and normally and Simon and Baz are not and I don't know if that's just something that I'm seeing or if it's an actual thing because I've read through the reviews on this and people like it a lot and I don't like it like I don't get it so those are my thoughts if I'm wrong please correct me but what the fuck is happening This lighting though, let's not. We need to have a chat and I need to be comfortable for said chat. Excuse my laundry basket, it's empty so it's all good. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna to talk to you about the two graphic novels I've read, um, which brought me great joy. I read one yesterday and one today, and that is Heartstopper Volume 1 and Heartstopper Volume 2. It just appeared in my Libby, and I didn't even realize I had requested the first one. And I was like, you know what? I deserve this. And I read it, and it was really, really cute, and I loved it. And so I went and requested the second one, and it showed up like an, like an hour after I had requested it, even though it was like two week wait. I'm like, Woo, so I have not requested the third one because I know that I'm gonna go through it in no time at all. And it was like 
not on my initial TBR for anything, so it was just like a nice little treat to myself um, in the midst of all of this horror of this. This is my horror. This is the off, the absolute, I, I finished it. Actually, I have to go get the other book I need to talk about. I think I have found quite possibly my least favorite book of the year, and that is Anyway the Wind Blows. I've rated this two stars. I've already gotten the comment being like, what the hell is happening? Um, stay tuned because I'm going to give you some spoilers just in case you uh, wanna read this. I will be talking in great depth about the finale of this um, and why I rated it two stars. And it was almost like three, it was almost one, and some par parts it was almost four. It could have been great, but it really wasn't. So, let's talk about this. The Simon Snow Trilogy. To be completely honest with you, I have no recollection of what happens in Carry On. Like, I, I truly don't remember what happened in Carry On. Like, I think that in order to get rid of this trilogy, which I really, really, really want to do, and to get rid of Fangirl, um, I'm already getting rid of Elador and Park. Like, I just need to reread Carry On. But, like... I don't know. Um, so basically, it's not the worst. I'm not like immediately just going, I'm unhauling this. This is definitely though a book that I would not bring across the country with me. Um, so that's my qualification of if I keep it or not, is if I would travel across the country moving with this. So no, I would not move with this. Um, but I would not immediately throw it out. I actually think I'm gonna give it to my cousin because I feel, feel like she would enjoy it a lot more than I would. But anyways, let's get into what happens. So in this book, here comes all the spoilers, everything. I'm gonna go through step by step of what happened in this book with you. So get comfortable for a sec. Basically, this follows three separate storylines. Simon and Baz, um, who also split off in their own little directions at some points. Uh, it also follows Agatha, and then it also follows Penelope and Shepard. And the reason why I gave two stars was because Penelope and Shepard redeemed some aspects of it. We'll talk about Penelope and Shepard first. Um, I don't remember how they met Shepard in the second book, but he is normal. He does not have magic. He is not part of the magical community, but he has... I, I can't hold up this book, sorry. He has magical connections, I guess, um, and he has made a deal with a demon. And Penelope's whole goal is to get rid of this curse that he has with the demon. And he knows what it is, but he's not exactly telling her everything. And she's kind of working a little bit blindly, but they kind of learn to trust each other. And he tells her more and more about how he got it and what he agreed to. Um, even though he didn't give up anything to get his curse, it's not really a curse. Um, it is actually a marriage proposal. And through the dealings of other magical beings uh, like trolls and fairies and giving up his firstborn and his thirdborn and his last name, um, Penelope finds like a loophole to get him out of his marriage proposal even though he was technically the one who proposed. It is very weird, very fun, I very much appreciated it. Um, it was like some nice comedic relief with a really cute storyline that I very much enjoyed. Moving on to Agatha. Agatha's storyline had to do a lot with trying to figure out where she wanted to be in the world, which I did appreciate about 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time. She works with this other girl named Maeve, I believe is how you say it. I liked Maeve up until the point that Rainbow Rowell decided that they needed to be a couple because it felt very much forced. It felt like she was trying to do an enemies to lovers again without actually doing an enemies to lovers. It wasn't even a slow burn. It was suddenly like, oh, this goat gave birth, let's kiss. And it was like not really provoked or anything. And like looking back, I can see where she really wanted to go with it and like the conversations and stuff that they did. Like, but it was very much out there and I feel like she only put it in there so she could have a female female romance and a male male romance. So it was really annoying that it got put in there. Somebody else might appreciate it but I, I thought it was very forced and unnecessary. I would have rather just seen Agatha go off with the goats. So there's that. Now moving on to Simon and Baz. In this book Baz is pretty good but Simon fucking sucks. Oh my god, does Simon suck? Simon decides 
to go on all these little side adventures while Baz is trying to help out people. They're looking for this dude Jamie, they're looking for his stepmom Daphne, and Simon is off trying to get his magic back but also get rid of his tail and wings and it's all very confusing. Like, they really fought at the beginning and then Simon was like, I'll try to make it work, which he does. They do focus on the relationship, but it's also like not the main plot of the story, which you assume it would be at this point. There's so much going on because there is another mage who claims he can increase your power. So he takes the weaker mages and he makes their power bigger and they can actually perform spells they've never been able to before and all this other stuff. And he like gives them hope and he's like, I'm the new chosen one. And Simon is like all for it. He's like, give somebody else the chosen one. But it like really gets out of hand and it's really awful. And the whole storyline just sucked the whole time. It really like, every time it switched back to Simon and Baz, I was like, can we like move it along? Cause I do not like this storyline. It was my least favorite part of the entire book, even though it was probably supposed to be the center of it. Not to mention when they're like epilogue, one year later, they only see like a glimpse of Agatha. There's nothing really wrapped up. We don't get to see, like I, I just assumed since the one lady was still alive cause the candle was lit for her and it was still lit that she was still alive, that she was trapped in a painting um, that we kept looking at like three or four times in the thing. Not, and there was like just some other things going on that I'm like, you could have made this 10 times better if you would have just followed like this plot line or that plot line. And instead they, she chose to just wrap up the shitty storylines. I don't know how else to describe it. She she wrapped up the weird parts of the storylines and kind of made it indeterminate. And by this point, you probably know how I feel about indeterminate endings. But this was very much not fun. I did not have fun reading this. I suffered through every second of it and I got it done as soon as I possibly could. But I liked Penelope and Shepard, so that's why it's two stars. But yeah, I will never be rereading this and I'm probably most likely gonna get rid of this book. I don't know. I, who, I'm very frustrated. I will sleep on it and then let you know. In the other news, now that spoilers are over, new book, we're looking at the new book, The Last American Vampire. I don't exactly know where I am. I think I'm on chapter nine, this one, possibly. Maybe still chapter eight. I am on chapter 10, so I'm doing pretty good. I know that Seth Graham Smith has this thing so I'm about that far in, like I'm a good chunk. Seth Graham Smith has a really good thing with history where he is really good with what he explains and seen that in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, he really knows Abe's life um, and he integrates vampires into it really nicely and wars upon layers of wars with the vampires and then Unholy Night which is one of my favorite books of all time he does that with Jesus' story with the three wise men being criminals and stuff he's really really good messing with history and changing it to his advantage while keeping it mostly the same but this is very weird this is Henry's life story basically and although I do appreciate people integrating history into their stories and integrating these weird moments where things are kind of like unexplained, like the curving of the bullet with Magneto for John F. Kennedy, assassin, like that whole thing was hilarious to me. I think it's amazing and I love when people do that because I'm like, you take this regular history event that's perfectly explainable and you make it weird and unexplainable. But that's this entire book. This just keeps happening, going and going and going and going and going. And I don't know if I like that. It starts with Roanoke. So I was like, hell yeah, I love the story of Roanoke. I think it's so cool. Thank you. But then it goes on to John Smith and Pocahontas, which isn't even the right story. And then it goes on to Jack the Ripper and we go on to there's Mark Twain and Tesla. I don't remember his first name, but he's in it. And then Tesla with Rasputin, which was very weird. And he just, he hits all the important parts since Roman Oak and then after that. He hits all of the very important aspects of world history kind of thing. The wars and just like various points that are super unrelated. And it's a little bit too much. Like there's a little bit too much to it. Like I appreciated it when it started, but as the book goes on, I'm like, okay, there's more. There's another one and another one and another one. Like I, 
yeah, it's just kind of like frustrating. And I don't know where it's, I know where it's going, but I don't know where it's going. And I'm just, I only have like a little bit left. So we'll see. I'm hopefully going to finish this tonight. I have like an hour and a bit left of listening on the audiobook. And hopefully this will end a lot better than this one did because I'm suffering. I'm suffering. That's where I'm at right now. That on top of I'm studying like insane, like a crazy lady. I'm just losing it a little bit. I would have so disappointed. But yeah, those are like my updates of what's happening in these books because I'm truly losing my mind. But on the other news, please read Heartstopper. It was so cute. I didn't even know my library had it, to be honest. And then I was like, wait, let me look. And it was there. And it was so worth it. And it makes everything so worth it. Um, welcome to the kitchen. This is a different angle. <laughs> I'm starting a project that I've been planning for like a month now. More than a month, probably. Basically since like beginning of September, I guess, for my bullet journal. I want to do like a year in review spread. It's gonna be like a shit ton of pages because it's something like I just figured out that I wanted to. I've always wanted to put tiny pictures of my books into my bullet journal, but I've never known how to go about doing that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I finally <laughs> figured out a plan to do it. And basically it started with my brother. <laughs> so shout out to my brother who works at a print shop um, because I don't have a colored printer. And this is what was stopping me is printing them off in black and white. And I know a lot of people are perfectly fine with that, but Books and Lala has been doing like a series where she tries out different bullet journals and she printed them out on this little white, black and white printer. It was like a receipt paper and it was really cute and stuff, but I was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it with black and white. Like, it's just not something that I have ever wanted. It's why I've never done it. So I was like, oh, do I afford, how do I afford a colored printer in the future? Like, how do I go about investing this? But my brother, my brother works at a print store. And so I could just get him to do it. I made the document up, filled it up with all the books and stuff. So this is what it looks like. He did like a great job. Um, I made this, I put all the books on there. I measured them out to the size that I thought was appropriate and got him to print them out however he saw fit. It looks kind of glossy in this light, but I swear it's not glossy at all. Like it's. It's very nice and matte. But anyways, they look amazing. Like, shout out to my bro, this is a great job. He did awesome. And then I was like, okay, next dilemma is I wanna put my star rating underneath them just to like have like a spread with all of them. So I went on a whole scouring trip on Etsy trying to figure out which size, blah, 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 what do I need? And I wanted them matched so that I could fill them in as well and make like a cute little spread. And I finally, I found some and I was like hoping and praying. They took like a couple weeks to get here, almost a month I think, that I was just, I was just like, please work, please work, please work, please be the ones I'm looking for. Cause I ordered like five sheets of them as well as some Halloween stickers. It was very cute. Um, and they came in and they are literally perfect. They are like super tiny, super small, and they basically fit right along with the uh, book covers if you look at that like oh they're beautiful so shout out to Thumbelina print check out their Etsy store amazing did a great job <laughs> and I'm so excited to get started on this like for real though I might just like buy a shit ton of these and use these forever because these are amazing uh, like anyways so I have like five sheets of that and I have my like little printouts I'm currently baking cookies the oven is on and I'm going to work on my bullet journal honestly this might take up enough pages that this will be like the end of this bullet journal for the end of 2021 and it will just be the 2021 bullet journal which is wild because I never thought I would I'm like I mean I'm only halfway through this is October where the ruler and stuff is so like I've only filled out that much stuff but who knows We'll see. I have big plans for my next bullet journal, so whatever. Oh, have I shown you guys my October spread? I put, instead of putting plants in it, oh, I put a plant. I put a pumpkin and some potions. That's what I did for that. And then here is like me reading. I've actually done quite a bit and I'm very proud of myself, but I've only done one review, which is for Heartstopper Volume 1. And then I've already started making my November one because this spread is going to be after December and I've been really consistent with where my pages stop on the months. I've only had like a couple longer months because like July or was it June? June I read a bunch more and then July I, or was it July? July I had a bunch of readathons and September I had a readathon. 
oh, one minute till the cookies are done. So I know for November and December and October, it's all gonna be like the same page. It's only gonna do like three spreads or whatever, I guess is what I'm saying. So I can guesstimate where this is gonna start. And that's my plan today is going to sit here I'm gonna set up my because I've already set up my November one I just need to like pick out colors and stuff for it so I'm gonna start my December one on the blank page and then after the December one I'm going to do this spread so I also have another idea for my 2022 bullet journal that I would really like to try which is like an overall year spread too but that one will be kind of more at the beginning of the year and it's more similar to the uh, star rating squares that I have at the beginning of this one. Hopefully that will go well. And I have a feeling that next year I'm going to end up reading a lot more, but that's just me. Join me on scissors. <coughs> Cookies. Halloween um, I look awful because I was out last night but um, reading update on the last day of the month finally um, before that though look at this cute little pumpkin oh my god <laughs> you're probably all gonna see this like in December but whatever my reading update is not that huge I guess I don't even remember where I finished off I last thing that I know that I finished as you can see everything's chaotic this is how my life is right now and this is why I haven't updated in a while the last thing I think I left off with I finished the last beautiful creatures book that's what I finished but I finished the last beautiful creatures book 
Beautiful Redemption, I think. Anyways, it was great. Loved it. 10 out of 10. In the meantime, I've been reading three other books, I guess. My loan just got returned for the first one. Um, so I have to, I'm gonna switch back to reading it, like, the physical copy, because I don't have the audiobook anymore. And that's, uh, My Contrary Mary. I am pretty far into this. I'm on chapter 24, which is page 261. <clears throat> so, like, it's pretty good. In the meantime, though, the audiobook that I'm listening to that I'm pretty sure is also being returned later today is Spin the Dawn. <clears throat> I am, again, about halfway through this. I'm on page 218. The audiobook for this one is longer than this one, which I am, like, I don't understand because this one has a higher page count than this one, but whatever. Um, I'm enjoying both of them. I am very much loving the trope that's in this one, where it's like the Mulan trope girl pretends to be boy to like save herself and her family kind of thing. I'm very much loving that. Um, she Who Became the Sun had very similar vibes to this one, but this one's more YA, which is totally fine. I love it, uh, but this one in our main character, Maya, is... A, a tailor but she's a woman so she can't be a tailor but she's been trained her whole life so she pretends to be a man and goes to the palace to complete a competition um it gets way way more than that the competition is over at this point there's so much more that's happening now and i love it 10 out of 10 and then also in the meantime the other book that i've been reading on my tablet is the spanish love deception and i have recommended this to so many people now <laughs> 10 out of 10 if you want a romance book amazing it has enemies to lovers as well as the fake dating trope and i am just like losing my mind it is so good uh in it our main character lena works with aaron and is having an issue she needs a date for her wedding and he agrees to be her date on the condition that she goes on a date with him to this other event thingy and things just spin out good, out of control they're very both of them are very stubborn both of them are like very mean to each other but also like super flirty at the same time and it's all really cute i'm already at the point where they're both in spain um pretending to be boyfriend and girlfriend and it's so cute oh my gosh i like cannot wait to see where it's going um i recommended this to one of my best friends and she was like losing her mind and read most of the book in a day and i'm like still only halfway through it i think I'm like to page 250 or something but yeah I'm like halfway through literally everything that I'm reading and it's it's a time we're having a time I'm having like a crisis with my books at the moment where I want to get rid of ones that I know I'm not gonna read again um which is what happened this summer which I'm not upset about because like the less books I have to read the better at this point oh well we'll see what happens but I will update you later probably tomorrow to see if I read anything else because I would really like to finish spin the dawn today i'm having a lot of fun with this it's like a solid four star maybe 4.5 star read at the moment but yeah that's my update happy halloween i'm drinking out of my poison cup today it's great and um i don't know if my halloween costume is in the mail or not i have to go check it uh if not i'm gotta figure something out because i'm handing out candy tonight <laughs>